One piece that people leave out is that there's people in the learning environments and that not only do young people or anybody want to connect to the objects and the tools, they want to connect to the people. We're part of the equation and can't be left out. And when we have designers who live on the 20th floor of a skyscraper designing schools, they forget a lot of times the people, as I was just on a jury yesterday, a jury call about learning environments and design. That's very, very powerful and important. The, the other thing that's important to realize is that this quote, new piece around maker spaces, which is a good idea in a lot of ways, as I've gone and observed in schools, is rele relegated like technology to Tuesday's fifth period. We're going to the maker space. That's not what this is about. And good maker spaces outside of school and inside are not doing that. At the same time, maker spaces are cultural. And they've been around for forever. They're in churches. They're in all kinds of community organizations. And when we had our conference last year, our national conference, we take all of our assembled participants and bring them out in the community for a full day. And they go to all kinds of learning environments to, to get everybody in the head that it's happening out there and school is part of out there. You can't put up the walls and just be inside. I took people um, to the Chewbacca Crew Garage, which is this place where they make the crew floats. Well, that's a cultural phenomena in New Orleans, Mobile, Alabama, any place where they have Mardi Gras. Go down places in Brazil. People have been making stuff for forever. People sit in with knitting and weaving circles. People sit in painter circles that they create in their communities. These are maker spaces that were maker spaces before the maker movement. And they're cultural and they're community based and they're based on interests. They're not just around, you know, a, a kit that you give a child at a museum and say, here's an Arduino, put a couple of wires to it and make the lights go off on a t-shirt. Uh, that's not what we're talking about when we're talking about making. Yeah, you want to put tools in the hands of young people so they understand what torque is. So when they build a plane, they're not building it on a two-dimensional screen and they can't get a sense and feel for it. They can get a visual, but they, it, we're, we're, we, th we should, as I went to a conference in Vienna, no, not Vienna, excuse me, uh, Venice, and the slogan was, think with your senses and feel with your mind, which we don't do very well. And we're, we got all those senses, and they're not all used in school, and they're not given um, the, 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 uh, influ the, the emphasis that they deserve. So that's part of these learning environments. Can you smell it, taste it, touch it, feel it? not just conscious, say it. That's not the whole thing and that's, and you can get fooled when the physical gets reduced to the mental and uncertainty gets reduced to certainty. We want a lot of uncertainty, we don't know everything and we want to have more understanding and the sooner we realize that the better.